<laughs> um, then I stumbled upon this really funny little clip or new story courtesy of UK Gossip TV where Shamaya Begum begs for forgiveness and claims that she didn't know Isis was a death cult before she joined. So this young lady has a very tragic story, kind of, if you think about it. Well, tragic, I guess it is tragic still. She essentially got recruited by Isis when she was like 15 or something like that. Um, flew over there with some of her friends. This was, again, during the heyday of Isis when they were filming those, you know, sensational videos, you know, crazy Hollywood production levels with drones and shit of people getting, uh, you know, executed in the middle of some desert sand dunes somewhere right insane um she joined um allegedly the story goes that she tried to re rescue some of her friends uh, british intelligence don't believe that they basically say she played an integral role in recruiting other women into isis she was somebody that believed a lot in their values and whatnot and then i guess somewhere along the line she married one of the guys there had the kids all all of them died i think with the exception of maybe one did one die i'm not too sure no i'm definitely either all of them died or two died one or the other something tragic like that happened and maybe that was the reason why she suddenly had an awakening and she decided that she didn't want to be in isis anymore and she went to come back to the uk but of course she'd been in isis territory for what a good amount of years it was very unlikely that she was going to be um how do you say it was very unlikely that she was going to be um reassimilated back into the west right especially um without any safety protocol just wasn't gonna happen so they didn't they didn't do that they blocked it they took away her citizenship and she's basically been stuck in a refugee camp ever since right she's basically got nowhere nowhere to call home for lack of a better term but ever since that she's been on tv crying and complaining about trying to get back into uk and the funny thing about it is that it kind of reminds me a little bit of um those occasions when you're in a club and you're acting out and a bouncer chucks you out really elegantly right because it's happened to me a couple of times where you're kind of acting out being a bit of a fool maybe someone's complained that you're stepping on their toes and you're being a little bit too you know um too loose with your hips and your and your wrists with your drink and you're spilling on people's shoes and shit he rolls up to you and he's like hey bruv let me talk to you a second you go what where, where, where? Come, come 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 talk to you, talk to you. As he's, as he's kind of beckoning, he's walking through the crowd. He walks outside where the smoking area is. He's like, come, come, come. You go down the corridor where the toilets are. Come, come, come. And then suddenly you're at a reception. Suddenly you're outside, right? That's like the quintessential tactic of security guards, right? They kind of get you outside in a very calm and easy manner without having to drag you by your heels or anything. And then by the time you realize that you're outside and your coat's in your hand and you're going home by yourself, do you know what I mean? That can happen quite quickly. But usually in that occasion, there are occasions where I've happened to be in that occasion. I've happened to be in that position where you start, you know, pleading your case with the bouncers. And from what I've known, from especially from guys that I know that do um, that that are bouncers in clubs or people that do security, if you've ever ch have to chuck somebody out and put them on the other side of the gate, on, of the gate there's no coming back. If you've had to go to that point, usually you've assessed everything and you've come to a conclusion that this person can't operate in the space that you're trying to secure, whatever it may be. So there's usually no going back. And of unless of course you're a very, you know, attractive young female um who's been who's able to swoon those guys over but even then i don't think they would be willing to do it because it's just too much hassle because you know god forbid lay down the line that really buxom full-lipped woman that they decide to let back in decides to kick off at someone at the bar those security guards will be in trouble so you just can't do it so for me it just feels like she's wasting her breath she's standing outside the club begging to get back in she's telling the bouncers about her mates who where they're sitting she wants her jacket and she gets her jacket she still doesn't leave like it's just not enough the party's over with like do you know what I mean you went and enjoyed ISIS it didn't work out you got cold feet you realize that they were dev cult too late and you know the UK doesn't want you anymore it makes complete sense but let's hear a little bit of a clip this is taken from um good morning Britain let's hear a little bit what she has to say I don't think so because the reason I came to ISIS to Syria was not for any violent reasons not because I wanted to be a terrorist it was because I thought I was doing the right thing as a Muslim and I was, I, I did not want to hurt anyone, you know, in Syria or anywhere else in the world. So, yeah, but it's hard to justify that, isn't it? Imagine telling people that you didn't know what ISIS was when you were 15. That was what 2015, maybe even maybe 2013, when she was that age. Like, come on, we don't believe that. And if we, if you want to know why I'm not sympathetic about her case, let's just read over her Wikipedia quite quickly, right? It says Shamaya Begum 
born 25th of August 1999, is a denaturalized British woman who left the UK age 15 to join the Islamic State. Her attempt to return to the UK in 2019 resulted in litigation culminating in the decision of the Supreme Court and the public debate about the handling of the returning extremists. In February 2019, the Home Secretary Acting Government of the United Kingdom revoked her British citizenship and he later stated that she would never be allowed to return. So at the highest levels of court, they're like, nah, she's not coming back. Background. Begum was born in England to immigrant parents of Baghdadi origin and citizenship. She was raised as a Muslim in Bethnal Green area of Tower Hamlets, quite near me, where she received her secondary education at Bethnal Green Academy together with her friends. Shortly after her departure, so da, 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 um, she left the UK in February 2015, age 15. So 2015, she says, she had no idea what ISIS was about. And if you were on the internet and you were on some of the dark alleys of the web you would have seen the videos of isis you would have known um about how ruthless they were right and how much fear they struck in people right and the the violent lengths that they went to basically reaffirm their message to say that a 15 year old didn't have and again we were passing around those videos on our phones so I, you know i can only imagine what these kids were doing back in the day so to say that you didn't know what isis was about is a complete lie like that's why you know come on this is true so she she, tried, she left the uk in February 2015, age 15. They travelled via Turkey to join the Daesh in Syria. In Syria, sorry. Um, shortly after her departure, Begum's sister expressed hope that she and her school friends had travelled to ISIL territory only to bring back their friend. Education Secretary Nikki Gorman, Nikki Morgan, said in February 2015 that everyone hoped that and prayed for the safe return of the three girls because at the at the time they were under the guise that they were trying to rescue their friend. Nonsense. Ten days after arriving in Syria, Begum married Dutch man born uh, Yego Rajik, um, in a, a convert of Islam who had arrived in Syria in October 2015. Um, the marriage may not be recognized under Dutch law since she was underage at the time. <laughs> she gave birth to three children, all of whom died young. Her youngest child was born in refugee camp in February 2019. And by March 2019, he had died of lung infection. So absolute horror show of situations was the end. Of course, had sympathy for her for it. But then it reports here, the Daily Telegraph reported that Begum was an enforcer of the ISIL morality police and tried to recruit other young women to join the jihadist group. She was allowed to carry a Kalashnikov rifle and earned the reputation as a strict enforcer of ISIL's laws, such as a dress code for women. An anti-ISIL activist told her and told the Independent that there were separate allegations of Begum um, stitching suicide bombers into explosive vests so that they could not be removed by detonating that is nuts so this girl here who's trying to play the victim and act all sweet and innocent with a little hat on again she doesn't really have a good pr team probably because you know she's in a refugee camp she probably doesn't have any sort of team but someone needs to tell her to kind of take off the hat and just i don't know get some curls maybe you know brighten up the eyes a little bit and get a little bit more sad because she obviously doesn't look like somebody that you would assume um is trying to beg to get back into the country she still looks like a little bit of a hoodlum <laughs> no i'm joking but in general just i don't know man she just needs to give it up i, I know it's sad i know it's out of order your citizenship is gone. I don't know what happens to her in the future, where she goes from here. But the fact remains, you know what I mean? You went to fucking Syria when you were 15 in 2015. Like, to say that you don't know what ISIS was about back then is just beyond, beyond a lie, do you know what I mean? It's like, it's above a lie. I don't know what that even is, above a lie, but it's, it's above.